Today's episode is going to be a little different than previous episodes. I'm going to be spending less time focusing on the history of these whiskeys and more time showing you how to play detective with the dusty clues on a dusty whiskey. But first, the suspects. This is Passport Scotch. It was created in 1965 by Seagram's um, and was designed to be a light style of whiskey for their export markets. For much of its existence, its main malt ingredient was Glen Keith until that distillery's closure in 1999. You can still find Passport Scotch on the shelves today. It is owned by Pernod Richard and its recipe is probably significantly different than that of this bottle. This is Pinwini Royale. This one has been discontinued. Its last owner was Inverhouse, uh, the owners of Old Pulteney and Ball Blair distilleries. A lot of effort was spent on Pinwini's design, including its old style font and a little velvet pouch for the whiskey bottle. Not every old bottle has a two digit date on the bottom. In fact, many don't. And sometimes what looks like a date might not be a date. For instance, today's Pinwini Royale has what looks like an 81 on the bottom. Now, what would this 81 mean? It would mean the glass bottle itself was made in 1981, which means the whiskey inside was bottled in 1981 or later. But is this really an 81? Beginning in 1980, Liquor bottles in the United States were required to list their liquid volume in metric measurements such as milliliters. This Pinwini's label, with its one-tenth pint measurement, is from 1979 or earlier, and the tax stamps U.S. Internal Revenue notation is from before 1977. So, is this an 81? Possibly not. There are other codes on the bottom of glass bottles that have nothing to do with the date. And in other light, this looks like a 91, or 61, or 18, 16, or 19. The moral of the story is you can't always rely solely on what looks like a two-digit date on a bottle's bottom. Also, be prepared to use date ranges for dusty bottles. And always look for more clues. This bottle of Passport Scotch has some conflicting clues. The largest font on the entire bottle is the 50 milliliter notation on the Wisconsin state tax stamp. Since I know you've been paying attention, you know that metric measurements like milliliters were required as of 1980. But wait, the passport label shows one tenth pint, a measurement used before 1980. Meanwhile, the federal tax stamp is of no help because the Bureau of ATF listing was used between 1977 and 1982. And the bottom also has that 81, 91, or 61, 18, 19, whatever. So what's the deal? It's likely that this was bottled in 1979 or, egads, 1978. It could have stayed in storage in Scotland or even at the U.S. distributor's warehouse until it was sent to Wisconsin for sale in 1980 or later. Remember, Scotch whiskey was experiencing very weak sales in the late 70s and early 80s, so bottles sat around. When was this bottled? Probably 1978 or 1979. When did it hit the shelf? In 1980 at the earliest. I'm going to start with Passport because it is bottled at a lower ABV than the Pinwini Royale. Next, it's Pinwini Royale. The Passport. I'll be honest, there's not a lot going on in the Passport at the start. It's very grainy, popcorn, chicken stock, maybe some fennel seed. I'm starting to get paper, apple, and licorice in the far background. The paper and cardboard note is expanding with time. Pinwini Royale. There's vanilla, there's brown sugar, there's honey butter, apples, a doughy note, like a bread dough note, lemons. It's still pretty mild overall, just not as mild as the Passport is. Cheers. It's sweet. It also has an overwhelming cardboard note. It also has a bitter bite to it. Woody vanilla, apples, not much of a finish on it. It kind of evaporates the moment it hits your tongue. Pinwini. The Pinwini is bigger, 
It's still sweet, quite spicy. There's a little bit of clove and nutmeg. It also might be my imagination, but it kind of tastes like fabric. Something like in between burlap and polyester and whatever that purple sack is made out of. The Pinwini does have more of the musty basement note that one sometimes gets with uh, dusty blends. Um, some nice citrus fruit that starts trending towards limes after a while. But the thing really hindering the Pinwini from being as good as I think it could be is that really big fabric note in the palette. The Pinwini has a finish. Uh, it's the citrus, salt, pepper, and fabric. To conclude, Passport Scotch definitely comes across as a lower shelf blend. It was clearly not designed for sipping neat. The cardboard note may be due to some bad casks. In any case, um, not really one I'd recommend. Pinwini Royale has some potential. It has some nice fruit, it has some nice spice going on in it. I don't know if it's due to all the time in the bottle, weird storage, or um, being kept in a little velvet pouch for 40 years, but the fabric note in it does not go away. As they are, I don't recommend either of them. I'm not sure if I'm going to finish either of them. Happily, I don't have any more bottles of these two in my stash, but... Papa! Sounds like my time is up.